welcome back to the channel if you are new here welcome my name is Kaya and today we are doing our very first CD unboxing and we're doing it to two King Diamond albums so these um, CDs were sent to me from um, a lovely subscriber and viewer of mine through the metal unboxing videos I believe it's the fourth or third one one of those <laughs> um, and yeah we got both of these CDs um, we unboxed them in one of those videos and uh, I already reacted to Abigail okay so if you haven't checked out the uh, reaction to King Diamond's Abigail record I did the full thing girl okay so go check that out after this video <laughs> but yeah this is a new series on the channel um, that I'm really excited to start I know I've been kind of talking about it um, but y'all your girl's busy okay we're doing a ton of different things <laughs> in the background so um, if you've been anxiously waiting Thank you. <laughs> We're here. So um, I'm super excited. If you don't know, I am an avid CD and cassette collector. Um, I used to have a huge vinyl collection, but when I moved to Asheville, I had to downsize, okay? I also inherited a lot of like old school country records from my granddad, and I had to downsize on those some of those too. <laughs> so I absolutely love collecting music, books, um, that, that sort of stuff. So, um, this is really just like kind of a cool little passion of mine, I guess you could say. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm excited to see the album art, what the CD looks like. These are really cool too, because it says the vinyl replica CD collection series in hardcover gatefold sleeve. So I'm not really sure what that means, but um, so far the, the, the whole aesthetic is just there and now that I know that Abigail is a concept record, I'm like, oh, I'm here for it, okay? I'm here for King Diamond and I'm here for his every album. Every album, every discography, like his whole his discography, I'm here for it. So before we get into the unboxing, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, we would love for you to join our metal community. I post weekly videos. We do tons of album reactions, five song discography dives. Uh, we're kind of just checking out a ton of different things. This is my journey the, uh, into metal. <laughs> I haven't even been listening to metal for a year, so uh, brand new baby metalhead, if that kind of stuff interests you, um, then join our community. Um, I also have a Discord, it's called The Mosh Pit. You can join down below, there's an invite link, and if you want to send something to be featured in a metal unboxing video, the P.O. Box is also down below in the description. So make sure you like and share this video. Let me know what you think about these two records. We have Abigail and The Eye. Uh, let me know what you think about The Eye. I know some of y'all have already mentioned your thoughts on Abigail, but if you haven't, then let me know. Um, and what do you think about King Diamond as a whole? Um, it's also Moshtober, so we're getting our spooks on, okay? <laughs> so without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first record we're going to open up is Abigail. Again, I have already reacted to this one, but I'm super, super stoked about this record. From Metal Blade, holla at your girl, Metal Blade, okay? I've only emailed you like three times, okay? <laughs> only three times, I would love to partner. So if you yourself work at Metal Blade or know anybody that's working there and, uh, want to help a girl out, help a small channel. Also, this is the back. This is what he looks like. Dude, look at this mullet that he's got. That's pretty sick. Don't worry, we're going to have um, all of this stuff close up. So this concept album absolutely blew my mind. Um, I didn't realize that King Diamond had major concept albums. This is always this, the like, <sighs> the most stressful part. <laughs> Getting the jacket out. Girl. Yeah, there we go. That was the hardest part. 
Remember, I think this is just a CD, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like really nice. This is a really nice like paper CD jacket. It's not one of those like normal flimsy ones, which I really like. It's very, very sturdy. As you can tell too by like the spine. It just seems very, very sturdy, but I do, I don't know, it used to be a big thing in like 2017, all of the like festival bands I feel like that I was listening to before I got into metal um, were doing like the single sleeve, just like one CD, you know, it was like this. <laughs> it was basically just like this, but it was like super thin and ugh, I'm wasn't really into that, so. Okay, so this is kind of like just the jacket with all of the uh, the lyrics. Oh cool, and it folds out into this. Y'all are seeing it first. And then here's the back. So it's got all the lyrics on there. This is such a nice CD. We would like to thank our families and all our friends for their love and support. A special thanks to all you diamond bangers around the world. Stay heavy. So cool. So that's his whole band then. Who's this dude in the corpse paint? Who's that guy? He looks really cool. I have to say I really like Black Horseman, like I said in the video, is just like fire, fire, dope, nasty. That is what actually changed my entire opinion on King Diamond. <laughs> if you watch the video, I said that his voice at first sounded like a rubber chicken and I still think it does. However, <laughs> I actually, I just really admire and like King Diamond now. Uh, Black Horseman sold me on the entire record and uh, made me interested in his entire discography. Especially when y'all told me that there's a chapter two to Abigail, I was like, yes, sign me up, I'm there. <laughs> uh, because this whole record was so unique and such an experience to listen to. It really does read like a, like a kid's horror story like a short story you know I guess kids whatever like short story but I just I really loved funeral um seventh day of July 1777 was really good I think possession the possession is still the weakest song for me personally on the record um but overall this record is really really strong and I absolutely love that the horseman on the cover they're the most important part of this whole story if you know this record and I love that that is like the center of their whole record so it's just super super unique this definitely is a very high quality um, CD jacket now let's actually check the CD so they said something about the it looking similar to the vinyl Oh my gosh, look, hold on, let's see if I can get it to actually, that looks like a mini vinyl, it's printed like a mini freaking vinyl CD, or a vinyl record, oh my gosh, it even has the ribbons, dude, holy cow, solid black CD, I've never seen something like this before, that is so unique. Oh, you'll see a close-up look. <laughs> I know, I wish my studio lights could do it justice. Dude, that is so unique. Oh, I bet that's so expensive to freaking print. That is so unique. So I'm like really, really stoked about this. I'm gonna treasure this for like ever. Dude, the back of this looks meaty and it's a nice heavy CD too. It doesn't feel like super flimsy feels very like nice and heavy look at those ridges on there it literally looks like a mini like a, it looks like a 45 but like shrunken down like a total mini vinyl do you guys collect music at all let me know down below in the comments i know that like vinyl came back cassettes are coming back uh which is just so funny it's not even like my generation, but I was always collecting cassettes and CDs before 
and vinyl before it really like <laughs> came came back so I used to have a vinyl record player I want to get another one but vinyl is expensive y'all okay but you know that's that's just how it is um so this one is called the eye we also have it with a mini Man, I'm terrible at opening this stuff too. I just put it on my the floor because I don't want it to like get stuck on my key my keyboard over here. <laughs> so, what is the backstory about the eye? Tell me what you think. We can listen to this one too. We'll get to it. I promise. Because, like I said, I'm definitely down. That's the cover. I'm super down to do more King Diamond. So what is the sitch with the eye? So I'm assuming that this is not this. It's, I don't think it's the sequel to Abigail. Um, I'm assuming it's a totally different record. So this was three years. The eye was three years after Abigail because Abigail was filmed or uh, released in 87 so oh yeah I pulled it up <laughs> um, so it said the I is the fifth studio album by heavy metal band King Diamond released in 1990 so three years after Abigail um, it continues to feature a major storyline like other King Diamond albums although it's told differently the Eye is the only album to feature drummer Snowy Shaw and the last to feature guitarist Pete Black and bassist Hal Patino until the latter's return on Abigail 2 The Revenge. So that's the one that y'all were talking about and that one was released in 2002. Wow, they released that like 15 years later? Jeez. Okay, so what's so it's two prior concept albums. This is on Wikipedia. So an explanation of this is two prior concept albums had been told from the perspective of the protagonist. This one is told from the view of a narrator. The themes of Christian atrocity with the persecution of alleged witches and sexual abuse against nuns are present. Uh, the story starts off with an unmade character finding a necklace called the eye. So I'm assuming, I'm not going to spoil it for myself, don't worry. Uh, I'm just seeing if any names like pop up. Okay, so I'm assuming it's not related to Abigail. Um, but you let me know, because um, I don't want to spoil it. But uh, Abigail too, definitely I want to continue. So here's the front again, and then the back. All I know is that somebody finds a necklace, and that's the necklace. So there's the back. Let's get this booklet out. I wonder if it's gonna look the same. She tight in here, girl. It always is when it's a fresh CD. Ooh, this one definitely looks different, okay. So here's the front with all of the, uh, the lyrics, and then we have a painted face on the side. You can kind of see that, and then here's this. I know you can kind of see that, but those are the faces. <laughs> Oh, I love that you're able to see King Diamond all vocals. King Diamond and Roberto Falco keyboards. So they don't have the keyboardist featured, or is Roberto, Roberto Falco, I'm assuming, is somebody different. But they don't have him featured in here. It just says King Diamond and Roberto on there. So what's the stitch with that? Was the keyboardist, was it super minimal, like, or was he just not a super big part of the band? 
because it doesn't look like yeah, he's in there. So Snowy Shaw, that was his last only album to feature Snowy Shaw. What's the what's the backstory with that? And the last to feature guitarist Pete Black and bassist. Okay, so the last to feature these two. What's the story behind that? What do we got here? The she she of the bitch burn two little girls the trial father Bicard insanity behind these walls into the convent I think y'all mentioned into the convent convent the meetings and the curse. Music by King Diamond, music by Andy La LaRock. Okay, so some people, it looks like Andy. Okay, so it looks like there's a few songs on here that King Diamond didn't actually write. Um, or maybe he just didn't have a major part in it. I did want to read what this little paragraph said here in this white box. It says the main part of the stories told on this album is unfortunately true and took place during the French Inquisition 1450 to 1670. All of the following characters are real and from that time period. Whoa! Nicolas de la Remy. So then they have all of these like characters mentioned. I know it's like hard to see but Nicolas de la Remy, head investigator of the Christian Burning Court, Chambre Ardente, in Paris, France. I know I butcher that, don't make fun of me. Jean de Basson, supposed witch. Madeleine Bavent, Bavent, 18 year old French nun who entered the convent at Louviers in 1625. After having been, sed been seduced by a priest, died in 1647 in prison. Father Pierre David, a chaplain of the convent at Louviers till his death in 1628. Father Matherin Picard, chaplain of the convent at Louviers from 1628 to his death in 1642. Among his sick, insane deeds, he managed to rape Madeline Bavent. Jesus. Well, that's brutal. Then they got some special thanks here. Very cool. Oh, it's cool. They, so they produced it. Roberto Falco. Falco. King Diamond and Andy. They also mixed it. Recorded and mixed at Sweet Silence Studio in Copenhagen, June to August 1999. Wow, they did this whole album in one summer. I mean, I guess when you have like a ton of money and a ton of time and that's like your career, it only takes you three months to record a record. Don't know what that's like, <laughs> but boy do I wish I knew. <laughs> Are you kidding me? If I could spend all my time in a recording studio, I would. I absolutely would. It's one of my favorite things to do next to spending time with you, you know, and spending time with my dogs. So I'm wondering if this, um, get your butt in here. Okay. We're just going to let you be poking out here. I wonder if it's going to be black, just like the other one. It is dude. I'm still so impressed with this CD. You got the, the ridges still. Uh, I'm trying to see if you can see it. You still got the ridges. Just the best, most pure. I don't know about y'all, but there's my little Christmas lights and me. <laughs> but I don't know about y'all, but like pure black like this is just like, oh, it's money. And this is like such pure, pure black that it's like, it just, I want to, oh my God, I can see myself in the reflection. Girl, um, <laughs> I just love pure black like this. It just, I, you can get lost in it. You ever see that video of um, the purest, like the darkest black paint in the world? 
girl. It literally looks like you're looking into like a black hole. But this is so cool. Love the presentation. Love that this is like a thing. It just really makes this opening like this, this just the it makes the cd look better because they could have easily just printed like this onto it but to have it be like a mini little vinyl record just makes it so much more valuable to me and just so, so much more cool in my opinion so definitely a really great um little presentation there way to go king diamond way to go metal blade so, yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. Um, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We would love to have you be a part of the community. Also, feel free to join our Discord, The Mosh Pit. There's an invite link down below. And, of course, the P.O. Box is also featured in the description if you want to send something into the metal unboxing videos. Um... Spooner has to make his crate sound cameo before the end of the video. <laughs> um, that's all I have today. I hope that you are doing so well. I hope that you are um, just doing really good and staying safe and taking care of yourself. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes.